Now, the latest development from Google that it describes as a state-of-the-art quantum computer chip. The company claims Willow leapfrogs over the supercomputers that we're used to, we're used to because of the world's fastest, and it takes five minutes for them to solve a problem that would currently take supercomputers 10 septillion years to complete. Well, Professor Alan Woodward is a computer scientist at Surrey University. Um, septillion, I, before I ask you what, how much is that, I know it's a lot, uh, but first <laughs> of all, I'm going to start with, uh, with, with the, you know, the very basic question, if you can explain what a, a quantum computer chip is. Right, that's the million dollar question. The, um, uh, in conventional computers, the, sort of the laptop I've got in front of me, the, the unit of information that's used for processing is called a bit. Most people have heard of a bit, and it has two possible values, zero and one. And typically, the way they're implemented on a chip is with a transistor, which is a fancy switch. So the switch is either on or off. So it's either zero or one. In quantum computing, you use what's called a quantum bit. And the quantum bit can also be zero or one. But if you can get it, if you can coax it into this very special state, um, it's a complex combination of zero and one. Um, it's some people argue that it's all possible values at the same time between zero and one. Um, and if you get lots of those working together, then you, you can actually, it turns out there's some algorithms you, you can do, which are much faster in that sort of state with a qubit than you could ever do on a conventional computer. Um, I'm slightly hesitant to say that this is a, the comparison with the supercomputer is actually really a valid one because the algorithm they implemented is really all about um, it relies on quantum physics. <laughs> and so the first thing the supercomputer would have to do is simulate the quantum computer um, or the quantum circuit. So I'm not sure it's a fair comparison in some ways. But the more interesting part about what, what they've done, what Google have done in this paper they've, they've put out, is what's called error correction, which is a very boring subject. Most people will never have heard of it, but we're all relying on it. I'm using it right now. All our modern electronics um, have errors in them all the time. And if you're not to end up with just lots of noise, um, but actually a signal you can use, you have to do what's called error correction. And what they've worked out is how to build um, a chip with 100, over 100 qubits on it, such that they've reduced the error rate below a magical threshold that everybody's been trying to get to for a long, long time. Um, and that's, that's the big breakthrough, if you like. So it's a, I hesitate to say it's a breakthrough. I think it's probably more of a major milestone. And it's certainly very encouraging for anybody that's working on quantum computers, because it means that, that, that what we can do is we now know we can scale these things up. We can add more and more qubits to the chips without necessarily just incurring a, a consequentially larger number of errors. And that was really what tipped modern computing over into the sort of the race we saw in the last 60 years where every 18 months the power doubled. Um, and that's, that's what this holds out as a potential. OK, well, I'm, I'm still grappling with the idea of it being being naught and one at the same time. But moving on, what are the practical uh, benefits of this potentially? Well, actually, it goes back to why quantum computers were first um, uh, first mooted by Richard Feynman back in the 80s, which is physicists were trying to use classical computers to model things in a quantum state. So when you go down to the microscopic level, quantum effects mean that you can no longer really predict and model things in the same way that you can in, in our, the world that we experience every day. Um, and so they decided, well, why don't we actually make a computer out of something that's quantum um, and actually has the quantum effects built in? Um, and that's actually what it turns out it's best at, is modeling materials right down at that microscopic level. So if you can imagine something like a drug company that's trying to um, model uh, various molecules and how they interact, the quantum computers hold up the hope that they can do that much faster than they can with a conventional computer, and they can run through all sorts of combinations that would take them potentially years on a conventional computer and do it, hopefully, in minutes okay. on, a, on a quantum computer. So potential um, health health uses there. What about the risks? The risk. Uh, the risk is one of the reasons people became very interested in quantum computing, including myself, I have to say, <laughs> um, was that back in 1996, um, it turned out that one algorithm that could be run was developed by a complete genius called Peter Shaw. Um, and what it does is most modern encryption, it relies on certain mathematics that are very difficult to do one way, um, but very complicated to undo and find out the answer. So, for example, if I ask you what's three times five, I'm sure you'll quickly say 15. But if I were to ask you 
what two prime numbers, when multiplied together, make 15, it takes slightly longer to work that out. Quantum computers and Shor's algorithm mean that it, it's equally fast both ways. So you, you end up undoing or making a lot of modern, what's called public key encryption, um, basically useless. It can be undone very quickly. But it's not to panic because um, we recognised this quite a few years ago. Um, and indeed, now people are being encouraged to move on to what's called post-quantum crypto systems and to show that quantum computers are not just conventional computers sped up, but they're, they're very good at certain algorithms. What we've come up with now is crypto schemes that are not, don't have this. A um, quantum computer will take just as long um, to crack it as a conventional computer, if not longer. Okay. So okay. there's kind of risks, but there's a solution there. That is good to know. It's absolutely fascinating. I wish we had longer, but Professor Alan Woodward, thank you so much for explaining that so clearly. Great to talk to you. This is BBC News.